Welcome to part two of my short video about making potato vodka at home. The fermentation, as I suspected, took no more than three days. It is now complete. What I'm going to do is take the fermented material in the pail covered by the blue bag. I'm simply going to dump all of that material through a strainer and capture it in this pail. Uh, the liquid that I, that I gather will then be loaded into the copper alembic still. And when this video resumes, you will see the alcohol dripping out of the condenser. Uh, based on the liquid that I'm going to be putting in there, um, I'm not going to get huge amounts, as I inferred in part one of the video. But when we resume, you will see alcohol dripping out of the condenser. Okay, so here we are. We've got alcohol coming off of the still. Uh, that noise of trickling that you hear in the background is just the water coming out of the condenser collecting into a, a pail. Um, I collected about 25 mils of heads at the beginning of this run. The total liquid that I have in the still is 11 liters and I reckon it's got about 4% alcohol. So I should get uh, no more than 500 mils of alcohol coming off of here. And what I'll do then is I will put it back into the still and redistill it because what's coming off right now will have a strength of around about 60-62%. By redistilling it I should be able to get that up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 80-85%. Um, and at that point I'll carbon filter it and uh, proof it down to 40% and uh, have some semblance of potato vodka. Okay, and here is the final segment. So what I've done, and by the way, the news is actually worse than I thought. On the first distillation run, I captured about 600 mils. However, the alcoholic strength was uh, about 38%. Pretty dismal. So now I took that 600 mils, put it back into the copper alembic still, redistilled it, and I'm not sure if you can see the scale on, on the cylinder here, but I've ended up with 225 milliliters of 60% alcohol. What I'm going to do with that is I'll run it through my Brita water filter to carbon filter it. I'll proof it down to 40%. And uh, let's just wrap up here by going through the economics. And, and they are, as I say, worse than I even anticipated. Um, six kilograms of potato. And the cost of that was about, uh, oh, probably $9 um, at the retail grocery store. And that only gives me 225 mils of 60% alcohol. So as a home distiller, absolutely. Go get some potatoes, have at it. You'll have a lot of fun. Uh, and potato vodka, from what I've tasted in the cylinder here, is pretty tasty. But as a craft distiller... The economics are stacked way against you. Um, you would have to have copious amounts of potato. Your your cost of acquiring the potato would have to be absolutely zero. Uh, that is to say, you'd have to grow them yourself. You'd have to have labor that worked for almost zero to pick them and process them. And you're going to have to then keep your overhead costs to an absolute minimum, which means the things like cost of rent, cost of advertising, um, cost of any debt payments to your banker will have to be minimal otherwise you're not going to make any money making pure potato vodka and, and it's just that's just the reality it looks to me as though the alcoholic strength coming out of the fermentation pail was I thought it would be closer to 5% alcohol I think I got about 3% um, so again there just isn't the starch in the potatoes to convert to enough sugar to make enough alcohol that's the bottom line Anyway, thanks for watching this brief video, and I do look forward to posting more just like it on ProhibitionUniversity.com. And the whole purpose of these things is to educate, enlighten, and uh, assist the home distiller and, and possibly give a few pointers to the craft distiller as well. So thanks again for watching, and have a great day.